All right, ladies and gentlemen. So, listen, when you're doing a quiz like this, what I want to have you understand is that I could give you one of these three things. So I might give you the name, or maybe I would give you the formula, or maybe I would give you the ion symbols, right? And my expectation is that you can fill in the rest of it from the one set of information. To complete this, you need a periodic table. So in doing quizzes, ladies and gentlemen, with this, I will always let you use a periodic table. And the periodic table that I'm going to allow you to use is the one that's on page 57 in your unit booklet. So that's the one that's on the very last page. And it has not only the periodic table, but it also has some of the charges of the common, most common ions. So that's the one that I would allow you to use. Now, here's how I'd go about doing this. If I know the name, which is the case for this first one, I would look up on the periodic table. And what you need to start doing, of course, is learning your symbols on the periodic table. Okay? Magnesium is capital M, G, and then chloride, you should know, is Cl. Well, how are they going to go together? Well, what do you have to figure out for how they're going to go together? Well, you need to know how they would ionize, right? Because once you know how they ionize and once you know their charges, then you know what proportion they would get together in so that their total charges add up to zero. And what I want you to do is put the cation over here and the anion over here because that's how we do things. The cation goes first, the anion goes second. And what you need to do is look up on your periodic table and either because of the position on the periodic table or using your chart, you would figure out what the charge is. So who can tell me what kind of ion charge would magnesium have? Go ahead, Michael Hobbs. Positive 2. So I'm going to write 2 plus. What kind of charge would chloride have? Deandra. A negative 1. So I don't have to write the 1. I'm just going to write the minus. Now, what I'm going to do is actually make some particle pictures. I don't really want, on something like this, full Bohr models. But what I want you to do is draw something like this with some type of pattern in it to represent magnesium ion and draw something like this with some other type of pattern in it to represent a chloride ion. I mean, you can do whatever you want. Slashes, dots, whatever. Just make something so that I know that this is different from this. Because the next thing that I want you to do is draw the number of them that's necessary. So this is a 2 positive. What's the charge on this? So how many of these are needed so that the charges add to 0? How many of which are needed? Who can tell me? Zach? Zach says I need two of the chlorides. I agree. So I'm going to make a second one like that. Now, if you draw these pictures like this, then I know you know what the proportion is. So that the total charges add up to zero. Then over here, we're going to make the compound formula. And what I'm going to do is actually draw them snuggling. So do you see how they're together? And are the charges are the charges still there? Well, I have not written them there because the charges neutralize one another, right? 
And now on this line, what I'm going to do is write a formula that reflects the proportion. So how do I write it? How do I write it? Okay, I'm hearing a couple people say it, and I see a couple of hands. Did I hear is MGCL2? Okay, so I'm going to write MGCL. How do I write the two? Do I write it up here? Do I what do we? So I write it as a subscript, so kind of lower and smaller. Do you understand what I'm asking you to do? We'll go through one more here so that you can see another example. Now here what I have is something called CA parentheses OH2. That's a formula. So what I would do is try to figure out where does the cation part and where does the anion part of the formula begin and end. And what I would do is just kind of draw a line in my mind. Well, what happened there? Why is that doing that? All right. I kind of draw a line in my mind in the formula. Where does the cation separate from the anion stuff in the formula? You see how I drew that big vertical line? you got to try to dissect, so to speak, the formula in that way. Because then what you can do is do this. You can do calcium over here and this OH part over here. You follow what I mean by that? Okay, now, what I'm going to do is make a symbol for my calcium. And it, who cares if it's the same thing as my magnesium? In this circumstance, it just doesn't matter. And now I've got to figure out, what is OH? Look at your periodic table. Is that one element, or is that, what is that? Is it one element? Okay, I'm hearing a lot of things. It's actually two elements. It's an oxygen atom, and I'm just going to write an O, and then a hydrogen atom together. Can you see what I drew there? I drew an O and then an H. Now, what's the charge on the OH? What's the charge on the OH part? I'm hearing people say negative one. I agree. What's the charge on calcium when it turns into an ion? It's a two plus. I'm hearing people say two plus. So how many OHs do I need to go with the CA? I need two, right? That's reflected right here. See that right there? So that tells me I've got another OH. This is a minus, and that's a minus. This is a 2 plus. So when you add it all up together, it's all together like that. And we need to come up with a name. What would we call it? What would we call it? This is where you need to use your chart. What's the name of this? So calcium. Oh, that's weird. I don't know why that's happening.
I'm on computer. So calcium, and what else? Just hydroxide. Sorry, that's not clear. My computer is behaving badly. All right, try to finish the rest of it. <laughs> 